if you attended the previous session, I'm sorry about the technical issues, and um, we have another opportunity to play Never Have I Ever, your Alpelosa edition. If you did not join the previous session, now you have an opportunity to play with us. Uh, so I'm Luke, I'm one half of Funken. Uh, we're a tiny nonprofit, and as uh, you get started, I'm going to share the, uh, the code in. No. Um, so please go to menti.com and use the code that I just shared um, in the chat. While you log into Menti, I'm going to start with a shameless plug uh, for Cobalt Metrics, which is our main project and uh, which is the reason why we're talking about uh, URL Palooza rather than Pita Palooza. So the web is not fair, will most likely never be, but that's fine. Uh, so we strive to link scholarly knowledge graphs with the web at large. Um, and our URI transmutation API converts any URI into a set of equivalent URIs. Um, so what we do is that we don't offer resolvers, we offer unresolvers that start from a URI and that try to find the pits uh, that could resolve to that URI and other URIs that identify the same resource. Um, so we're going to start with an icebreaker question about um, which is just a self-assessment. So there are no rules, there's no real scale, it's just up to you. Um, how familiar are you with URIs, URLs, permalinks, PIDs, and the brand new, at least to me, uh, Goopris. Not sure how that's supposed to be pronounced. So in order to vote, and then we're going to have 10 questions uh, for the game of Never Have I Ever, please go to menti.com and use the code 3201. Fifty-nine-one, um, and we'll wait as the votes come in. So you can use your own scale uh, for the familiarity votes. And for the remainder of this presentation, if you do not know the difference between a URI and a URL, uh, just assume they are the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Todd, do we know how many people are uh, have joined this session? It looks like uh, 13. OK. So we're going to wait just a few extra seconds uh, for people to vote. Nope. All right. Well, if you have difficulty logging into Menti, uh, you can still answer the question, even if I'm not using that slide. Uh, and of course, I'll be sharing all the results um, and the slides uh, on Zenodo. I'll share the links on Slack. And because the PDFs that are generated by Mentimeter are not accessible, I also share um, a simple document where you can copy paste and then click the links. Uh, so now for a game of Never Have I Ever, if you don't know the rules, uh, you're going to be answering questions statements rather that start with never have I ever. You have 30 seconds to answer each statement. The answer is either I have or I have never. Uh, faster answers get more points. There's, uh, that being said, nothing to win but bragging rights. And um, after each, each question, there's a slide with a few remarks, a few pointers um, to uh, content, not necessarily written by us, but that relates to the question that I just asked. So uh, let's get started. The first. Oh, yeah, you have. I'll give you a few seconds to enter um, a name or nickname. All right. 
I don't see anyone joining, so we'll start with the first question. Um, never have I ever copy pasted a URL from the address bar of my browser. 30 seconds to answer. And be honest, there are no rules. You can just, you know, confess all your PID related sins. Um, and, and, and that one, we've all done it at some point. So, oh, one of us has never copy pasted a URL from the address board of their browser. That's impressive. Um, few thoughts about copy pasting URLs from the address bar of your browsers. The URL that you see in the, the address bar, the search bar, the Omnibox in Chrome, it's gonna be the final link in the chain of resolutions or redirects. Um, so it's usually anything, um, it's usually not a PID and the URL can be manipulated by scripts and extension. And the final remark is that we've recently there's a Chrome extension that search through the page metadata to bring uh, the PID above the fold if it's mentioned in the metadata. And uh, don't worry about the links, I'll be sharing anything after. So the second question, um, never have I ever, linked to a paper using a TRL rather than a PID. So if you've already shared, well, actually a paper or any research object for that matter, um, using the URL that you found in an email, in the address bar of your browser, anywhere, um, rather than looking for a persistent identifier. Again, no shame. Yeah, well, we've, we've all done it. Um, the uh, limitations of linking to a paper is that really, unless the paper has no PID, you have no excuse. Uh, so that one is pretty simple. Please use persistent identifiers whenever you can. Uh, even if they are long, even if they are friendly, even if they are not um, readable by humans, I do not care, please use PIDs. The third question in that game of never have I ever. Oh, it's. Yep. Question three Never have I ever formatted a DOI with the DOI scheme. So, not as a um, HTTP or HTTPS URL, but really typing DOI colon and um, the DOI value itself. Five second left, everyone has voted. Um, so it's it's pretty splits. Um, it is not, oh, so yeah, one thing, there are no bad answers uh, in that game. Um, even though some things are not recommended, we all copy based URLs, DOIs and everything. Um, but the reason for which you should not format DOIs with the DOI schemes is that first, most browsers and most robots have no idea what to do when they see a DOI column um, URI. And then um, I put up links to the um, DOI display guidelines from Crossref and data sites um, that are very similar, um, building on the same principles. The next question, never have I ever shared or created short URLs, including short DOIs. Twenty seconds to answer. So a short URL comes from Bitly, a bunch of different shortening services, Twitter, does create short URLs. 
Yeah, the majority of us have already used uh, short URLs. Um, I do in my slides, even though that's a bad thing. So URL shortening was a, a, a terrible idea. Um, there are dozens of shortening services that have already disappeared, whether for profit or not for profit. And um, in some cases, we've just lost the mapping between the short URLs and the long URLs, the expansions. Um, there are at least two different uh, initiatives to scrape and archive URL shortening data. Um, there's a link to one project called Terror of Tiny Town, and you can also run a server that uh, processes the, the data and, and releases it to the community. Question five. Never have I ever shared URLs from Sci-Hub. So it's not about whether you've used Sci-Hub, it's about whether you've shared uh, URLs to PDFs, um, hosted, even though they are not technically hosted on Sci-Hub. Ten seconds left. So, um, yeah, most of us have, have never shared Sci-Hub URLs. I've never done it. Um, it's interesting to see that some people have. It's even more interesting to know and to see that there are links to Sci-Hub in papers published by Elsevier and I guess other um, publishers. My point of view is that we should identify all citations, uh, no matter whether they use proper industry standard um, identifiers like the OIs or URLs from Sci-Hub. Uh, I've also included a link to a case study we did on your transmutation and Sci-Hub URLs. We're able to uh, undo Sci-Hub URLs in most cases and give you the publisher URL without accessing the servers, um, whether without accessing the servers of Sci-Hub or the servers of the publisher, just by looking at the URLs, we are able to undo them most of the time. Uh, which brings us to the next question, which is just a more um, general statement about uh, proxy URLs. Never have I ever shared proxy URLs, for example, easy proxy. And if you don't know what a proxy is or what easy proxy is, I guess you have never shared a proxy URL. Ten seconds left. Huh. Predis splits. Um, so even though there are only good answers in that quiz, sharing proxy URLs is really not recommended, um, especially easy proxy URLs. The main reason is that easy proxy, for example, rewrites the URLs by changing the domain. And uh, in all cases, I think for easy proxy, the URL won't work outside of your institution. Um, the, the, what I said about Sci-Hub applies to proxies, even though they are legal, they have the same technical limitations. Uh, so when possible, even though most of the time you don't pick that, but if you can use, um, federated identification or credential, I don't know what the, the, the term is, uh, prefer open ID, open Athens and, uh, Shibboleth implementations. Uh, and please do not share URLs from easy proxy. The next question, never have I ever shared a PID or a URL without checking what it resolves to. Like really trusting the PID or trusting the URL by looking at it or by trusting the person who sent it to you and sharing it without checking um, the, the, the online resource that you get when you try to resolve it. which is something that I'm guilty of doing. Time's up. And again, we're pretty split. Um, I'd like to congratulate the persons who uh, have never, ever shared a PID without checking what it resolves to. That's really uh, good practice. Um, a few words about this. Um, you should be wary of link rot and content drift. Link rot is when the, the identifier itself 
kind of expires and breaks and it doesn't resolve to anything anymore. And content drift is when uh, the content that the bid resolves to changes so much over time that it doesn't necessarily represent what you originally cited. Um, and just a few stats, 59% of URLs shared on Twitter are never clicked. And we now have resulted at uh, science related and scholarly URLs, 50% of scholarly URLs shared on Twitter are never clicked, even though that's a bit different from sharing URLs without checking where the results to. I think it's uh, interesting to know, and we now have uh, proper studies to, to back those numbers. Um, question number eight. Um, Never have I ever treated HTTP and HTTPS as interchangeable. And if you do not know the difference between HTTP and HTTPS, um, I guess by default you treat them as interchangeable. Ten seconds left. Yeah, uh, most uh, respondents have treated HTTP and HTTPS as interchangeable. Um, the only comment that I have is that um, they are not interchangeable, even though the names are similar. They are completely, well, completely, they are different. A uh, few pointers, please use HTTPS everywhere. It's a really cool extension by, made by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, to make sure that you use HTTPS whenever it's available from a website. And there's also a nice uh, presentation by Andy Schester about um, the way URLs are displayed in Chrome and whether or not you display HTTPS or you display that lock icon to tell people it's secure. Um, and remarks about the fact that we're all pretty bad at just looking at URLs and knowing whether they are safe or not. Uh, question number nine. Never have I ever wondered how URL equality or equivalence is defined or measured. Like, how do you know whether two URLs or two PITs for that matter um, are equal or equivalent or interchangeable? How do you define that and how do you measure that? 10 seconds left. Should have used some background music. Huh. It's interesting for the Pilatoza crowd to um, say that the majority says that they have never wondered how your L quality equivalence is defined. Um, I guess sometimes systems just work because we're the end users and we don't wonder how they work. Uh, if you do wonder about that, this is what URI transmutation is about in Cobalt Metrics. It's about finding criteria and thresholds to decide whether two URIs or two PIDs represent the same resource. Uh, you should also check the presentation by Melissa Handel at PWSI in 2018 that was referenced in another presentation. And that same um, presentation that I just mentioned by Emily Shesto, um has some nice things to say about URL equality. Uh, which is a complex topic. And the final question of that game of never have I ever um, is the one I'm the most curious about. Never have I ever been annoyed by the unfriendliness of PIDs and URLs. Twelve seconds left. All right. So most people, me included, I have to say, uh, have been annoyed by the unfriendliness of bids and URLs. That being said, um, in my opinion, bids and URLs are intended for machines to exchange information. Uh, they are not designed 
to be read or written down or exchanged by humans. So uh, we're not the target audience for PIDs and URLs. Um, another thing is that person time is a matter of service, not conferred by any particular scheme. So there's nothing to fix in the way PIDs are um, minted and represented. We just need to improve the service so that uh, PIDs become so useful and so well integrated that we don't see them anymore. Uh, we know that we should use them, but we don't try to read anything in them. Uh, and I think um, we shouldn't try to brand PIDs with like publisher names or archon names or anything. They just should be completely um, unreadable um, for a human person. But we do love PIDs anyway. Um, and that brings me to the leaderboard. So the winner is not John C, followed by Jim and Simba. Um, so congrats to everyone, especially not John C. There's absolutely nothing to win uh, except bragging rights that you won the first Never Have I Ever uh, URL Palooza edition. And uh, again, I'll be sharing the slides with the results, the Excel spreadsheet with the results, and all the links um, that were in the comments uh, on Zenodo, and I'll share the links on Slack. And uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, we're having some <laughs> some serious fun in the chat about who is not John yeah. C. <laughs> right. Catch up with the chat. <laughs> All right, Luke, that was so much fun. Um, uh, so thank you for that. Um, Really appreciate the uh, the time and effort that you put into that, and the uh, uh, the the fun that it was. Uh, great session. I'm glad we were able to fit it in. Thanks. I'm glad you. And uh, uh, little little behind the scenes, Nettie wants to invite you to do it somewhere else. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Um, and again, sorry we had technical issues earlier. Uh, I hope some of you were able to attend both sessions to um, play a more interactive game of Never Have I Ever. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so, Luke, thank you very much. Um, thank you.